Okay, so in this video, what we need to actually do now is check for the status of each square because we are able to place our players' characters on the board, but what we actually need to do is check to see if that particular square is already occupied with another character or if it is indeed empty and available to be receiving the player's character in their next move. So after we have done this, in the next video following this, we'll then be able to check for a win, lose or draw status. But we can't do that until we know that we can safely place our characters on the board without overlapping or overlaying them on top of other characters. And that is what we're gonna do in today's video. Okay, so if you haven't been here before, my name is Angela McCall. This is Point and Click Puzzle Games, a small YouTube channel dedicated to helping people learn how to program in the Lua programming language. Now, the Lua programming language is great for building mobile app games and it's also commonly used in Roblox. As a mum, I have launched this channel as a way of helping to teach my girls as they start to get a little bit older now how to design these games for themselves should they want to. And so this channel is designed for teenagers upwards. In today's video, we are going to follow on our process. We've been on a wee bit of a journey over the last few weeks, learning how to build out the Tic-Tac-Toe or Noughts and Crosses game. This game is, the, is one that I've picked specifically because everybody knows how it works and operates. It's very simple, but yet it allows us to have a variety of different skills that we can learn as part of our growth in this uh, programming language. So, if we're going to have a quick recap as to where we're at, here is the game as far as we left it on the last video. And if you look, our game knows which player it wants us to start with. And then now players one turn is going to be the null, and then players two is the cross, and so on and so on. But if you look, we can place characters on top of each other, which is no good, okay? So we need to resolve this problem before we can actually start to identify if there is a winning line or not, or if the game is a draw. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come back on over here to our um, code. And if we scroll all on down to where it is that we create our actual squares here, let me just enlarge this just a little bit for you. You can see here that as we create a square on the screen, we give it lots of characteristics such as its size, its width, its shape, its color, etc. But what we're going to do is we're going to give it one more characteristic. We're going to tell it that when it is first created, okay, um, let's put it status actually, is empty okay so as that square is now being designed it is being told that its status is empty and then that square is being put into the array now this array contains information on all nine squares that make up our noughts and crosses board and so later on in a moment further down the code we can now explore each one of those objects the grid square placed into the array to see what its current status is. Now, if we look carefully over here, we've already discovered which square is being tapped on. So let me just highlight that, for example, square number eight, which is the last one I've just used down here. And obviously I double clicked on this one. So therefore it was the one that was tapped previously. And then it was number five before that, square number two. So we already know in our game which square is being tapped on. So what we need to do now is cross compare the square that's being tapped with its current status and the player's character in order to determine what character we put where and tell the square that it is now occupied. So that's what we're gonna carry on doing down here. So down further on, we've got this section where it says draw uh, which square is tapped, okay? And we've obviously got this little bit of code that we've done in previous videos that show us how to determine which player's character to put where, okay? And up here, this event target number, the event is the action that's goes to basically going to tell us what's going on. Target helps us zone in on the particular object and then we've already given that object a field called number. So if you look back up here, when the... Um, 
when the object was originally being created one of its characteristics is that it knows its number and there we've got a counter that's populating it which was uh, basically designed here and then the iteration of each loop through was updating it or every time this function was called it was updating it so that's how each square got its number so coming back down all right okay this event here is basically the event which is being triggered when I tap on the board it knows which object is being tapped on and then its actual characteristic number we are being able to display as a printed statement on the console over here okay so we've got all the information that we need so the first thing I'm gonna do just above we're gonna tidy up our code a little bit later because now we've got a few things going on so the first thing we're gonna do is we need to loop through our entire array and investigate every single one of those nine squares so for I value in I in I pairs the array board is what oh there we go hang on let me come back up here array board we're gonna do and and for now just so that we can see what's going on we're gonna print over here in the console the value with the index and the value now value in this case is going to be the object i could put object it might be easier for you to understand and that's its index okay so we're going to for every indexed item its object we're going to investigate that lives inside the array board so let's just now for the moment print this information to our screen so we're going to print um the index out okay and then we're gonna finish that off there we go and then we're gonna put print the object now we can't print the object specifically because it is an object what we need to do is print the data of its fields or its characteristics that we've already given it so if we look back up here when we created this grid square object we gave it a number and now we've given it a status so this is going to be a number and this is going to be the word empty so what we need to do is print out here the number and we also need to print out the object dot status okay now with a little bit of luck if i hit save when i now load this game again as i tap on the square okay we can see over here clearly now what is going on so the square bracket is the index there's the square brackets okay so it's telling us that we are checking all nine fields of the array that's what these numbers are in squares then we're actually printing out the object number okay so the object knows it's object number one two three four five six seven or in this case it's the grid square and then we're also going to print out its status so now we know that square one is being tapped so the actual board knows it's being tapped and we know that the array knows every status of every item so what we need to do is now is actually get this one out and cross compare it to that to the square that's being tapped so if this is where we need to do an if statement so if the object number is equal to our event number so we know these two numbers so this is essentially saying in this case over here we're saying square one and one so these we are comparing that value and that value are equal so this is by basically saying it's got to match perfectly then we're going to print the word match just so that we can test our if statement else we're going to print oh, non match okay and then we need to end the if statement itself okay so let's save the game as you can see the little dot up there tells us we need to save. so control s on the keyboard that reloads the game and now when i click on the square number one okay what we've got going on is the board first of all tells us that square number one is tapped on the app knows that it's the players it was player one's turn obviously it's now waiting for player two we know that at the moment, at the time of doing this, every single square in the array is empty. So now we know that this one is a match and all these others are a non-match. So now we've been carefully able to identify this particular square. Instead of putting the word match, what we need to do now is change the status of this 
object. So we're going to change the object status. Okay, it's now going to be, for the moment, I'm going to put occupied. What we actually need to do is name the character naught or cross. But for the moment, just so that we can see what we're doing in this game, I just want to show you for the moment that it's occupied so that we've been able to handle this, this status here. So I'm going to hit save. This one is a match. Okay, now the reason that this hasn't updated is because we technically have this kind of problem in that this information was printed to screen before the field was updated. But if I click on it again now, you can see that the information being printed to the console was almost a step behind what's happening on the board. But you can now see that we did have this one occupied. And now if I update this again, it will now say two and three are occupied. So now you can see two and three. So the, the information is correct. The status of the console was almost like a step behind, as it were, which is to be expected because it's the trigger of tapping that actually populates it. So it's almost like we need to rejiggle the order of events in order to make sure that when this information on the console gets put, printed to screen, it's because we have put the text there or we've printed it to screen. So it just means that everything needs to be jiggled around just a little bit. To do that, we can see down here that as this square tapped function is called, obviously, as we said, we've got the player's turn going on. And then previously in other videos, we've identified which player's turn it is and what character is. So we know here, that the last character placed was a naught, which it was, that's fine, and that was player one. So again, all the information already exists, but it's all in the wrong order. So after we place the character on the board, what we could do is call a function to say, update square status. Okay, at which point we can call a function that we can have that's sort of embedded up here. So local function, let's copy and paste. Oh. and then we're going to indent all of this in and then I'm going to put end down here okay so we've now got this status here so again if we wanted to just check that we are accessing this print the name of the there we go so we know that this is being accessed so we're going to update the status there and the reason I'm doing this is so that we don't have to duplicate this code twice. Remember, everything that you do is about minimizing the amount of code that you have. So you don't have to then technically fix this same process twice or three times or four times. I mean, if you imagine you had a grid of 100 squares, you wouldn't want to repeat that for loop 100 times. You want to write the code once and call it 100 times from each of the squares. So this is the why we've got this local function now nested with inside this other function okay so we're going to update it and when we update it we're going to just print to make sure that we're accessing it and then this loop is going to play out okay the next thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to print the status after so let me just blank that out for a minute after we've done the updates so we now get the object number which we know from here's the object that we're getting and we're accessing its characteristic. We know the event number, which is fine. Then we're gonna print the word, there's a match, so we know that we've gotta change it. Then the occupied status, then the, obviously a non-match, and then, then we're gonna print the results to the screen. So that will change the order and hopefully then the console will keep place with everything that's going on. And then the last thing that we have to do is we have to change that word from occupied to the name of the character, which we can see is naught. So in fact, what we could do now is we could actually take out that character. Where has it gone here? And we could put in the character. Now, the only thing that we haven't done is identified which character is being placed. So when we send it, as we are in here, player one, so we could send it player one's character. And then if it's this one that's being called, we'd send it character two. Oh, player, ah, character two, there we go. So now when this here, so if I put the word in, character, as this gets called, it now knows which character that we need to actually put here. And what we could do is just to make it a little bit easier is local variable character equals in k. 
character okay so we've taken the we've received it in popped it in there that itself is now going to be the value that we put in here and I'm going to make sure it's a string just to be on the safe side just to help make sure there is no other glitches and then what we can do just to be safe is once this function has finished we can nil out so that we know that every single time that this function is called we are definitely working with uh, an empty variable so i'm going to save that and let's test it fingers crossed all the grids populated i'm going to test square number one okay so what we've got here the square oh there we go so we know that the square itself knows it's being tapped on the app knows it's player one's turn player one's number and player one's character okay we know that this function is now being called because we've got our little test statement so we can actually mask that out now because we don't need it we know there is a match because it's told us then we have done um an update so we've put the character into the object status we've put its name and we know it's a string because i made sure it was converted into a string so therefore we've been able to say now that it's not empty that actually square one holds the value naught okay and we can still see that all those others are a non-match so we don't actually need that information now either because we've done our testing process as we've gone through it so if i hit save and we test a little bit further so one oh there you go the the board array where's it gone my board array there you go it now holds nine values but the first one is occupied with the value noughts then we've got crosses noughts crosses noughts crosses noughts crosses noughts okay now what we haven't done is actually test to see if we can place characters on top and if we can then we still need to fix something so there we go so we still got a problem that we need to fix but we're almost close enough to finish having resolved that now so only if the status is empty can we basically print the characters uh the player's character so we need to still juggle this code around a little bit further okay so we've updated it um but down here this code here isn't relating to the events that are going on we're sending it the play player character that's fine okay but and we're drawing the null but we should have really updated and tested so again we need to jiggle around the order that everything's taking place because we can't really draw the character and then update the square we need to do it the other way around okay so that's it from me on this particular video and like i said in the next video now that we've got the ability to manage the, the board status and every field knows what's going on with it we are now able to check for a win lose or draw status because every field or every square has actually got the cross or the noughts name added to it and so it knows what's going on so if you haven't already please do subscribe stay notified please put your comments below i am interested in hearing your challenges and i will answer as many of them as i can and i'll see you on another video real soon